Assassin's Creed Mirage is releasing tomorrow, and in this quick video, I'll be showing you how to absolutely max out your FPS for the best possible performance and, of course, gameplay experience while you're playing Assassin's Creed Mirage. This video was sponsored by Ubisoft. Thanks for giving me a key. And without further ado, let's begin. This video is not going to jump into Windows optimization pretty much at all. Instead, in the description down below, you'll find a Windows 10, 11, and NVIDIA optimization guides as well as anything else that'll help you out. Without further ado, let's Let's begin. Hopping into the actual game itself, I've pulled up info in the top left, where I can benchmark using the in game benchmark as well. And to start, I'll leave pretty much everything on default, which for me is 2K. I'll make sure my resolution is maxed out here, and VSync is disabled. And on the graphics tab, it defaulted to ultra high for me, so this is where I'll get a benchmark from and we'll work our way down. Oh, and I'll also disable adaptive quality here as well, just so it doesn't mess with anything else. That seems about good. Cool. I'll jump straight into the benchmark and we'll see what happens. So off the bat, there's some noticeable stutter when flying around. And of course, it's locked at about 70-ish FPS on a 3080 Ti with very little CPU utilization, meaning that this option is obviously super GPU intensive. This is a really good starting point, as not only do we have stuttery gameplay, or at least somewhat, but of course, we also have a low FPS counter that will greatly improve throughout this guide. And there we go. You can see my average FPS was around 69. Nice. Minimum of 6 and a max of 150. So obviously, there's a huge amount of variation. And this is with everything running at ultra high. It used around 6 gigs of VRAM, which is notable. So let's get into optimizing. Heading back to the main menu, if you're going to be changing some of these settings, a lot of them require you to to restart the game. So as you're going through this, if you'd like to benchmark everything individually, it is going to take a long time. So instead, I'll simply jump through and show you optimized settings. All right. So starting on the screen tab over here, at the very top, we have field of view. This is your preference. While it will technically affect FPS, I'd highly recommend setting this to whatever you prefer as a much more enjoyable game definitely tops a higher FPS counter. Then FPS limit, absolutely set this off unless for some reason your GPU is being completely eaten by by the game, leaving nothing for something like OBS Studio. And if you're a streamer with stuttery recordings, streams, or overloaded encoders, this is what you can lock to slightly below the FPS count you're getting in game. For example, if you're getting 70 something FPS, lock this down to 60 while streaming, and it'll save your GPU a ton of extra power, meaning that your streams and recordings will be more stable. For everyone else, I'd recommend keeping this off. Then scrolling down to display, this is your preference for the active monitor, window mode, I'd highly recommend full screen for the best, most stable performance. Aspect ratio and resolution are your preference. Obviously, the resolution should match that of your display. Otherwise, you're pushing more pixels than you can see, or it'll just be needlessly blurry. If you need to lower your resolution, we'll get here later on with dynamic resolution. For now, keep this pinned to your actual monitor resolution. Then refresh rate, this should match your monitor once more. If you have a 60 hertz, select 60. If you have anything above, you'll see higher numbers here, but it's pretty much locked to whatever your monitor has available. Then VSync should absolutely be turned off unless you're getting screen tearing where the top and bottom half of your monitor don't match up. And finally, resolution scale. For now, we'll leave this at 100%, but you can lower this later on if you're really clawing for performance and everything on the graphics tab is already lowered. The graphics tab is where we'll get most of our performance, so let's start there. At the very top, we have graphics quality. Ultimately, you know what performance your PC gives you, and you can choose, based on these options here, the closest that you can guesstimate your PC PC will be at. From there, we'll work either up or down. The highest I would go is probably very high, as between very high and ultra high, there's practically no difference in game other than losing a bunch of FPS. So very high is as high as I'd recommend you go, unless you have a crazy powerful 4090, etc. This game has a great feature, which gives us a preview on the right hand side, showing us exactly what each of these options do, as well as what each of the settings do, which is great. While hovering over things, you'll get a general idea of what exactly changes. For example, between low and medium, there's practically no difference. Between medium and high, you'll notice a few more objects appear that weren't there previously. And between high and very high, even more objects that pop in that weren't there before. So the higher this option, the better things will look in game. High is a good choice, otherwise very high. Then clutter density. Higher options will lower your performance a lot if you're on a CPU limited scenario. As in your GPU is way more powerful than your CPU and the only thing holding you 
back is your CPU. As you can see, raising this option adds a ton of foliage, grass, etc. Having this on low makes the world look a bit barren, so medium is probably the lowest that I would go unless you're really CPU limited. So I'll choose medium and move on to environment. First of all, shadows. The higher the option, the more crisp shadows get, and between medium and low, they are noticeably blurry and pixely. I wouldn't recommend either medium or low. High is pretty much as low as I would go once more, but of course, if you're clawing for FPS, this is an option you can drop for a huge gain in performance. For me, I'll stick to high as it's pretty much good enough. Raising it to anything above this, you'll notice shadows get a lot crispier, but your performance should drop quite a bit as well. Then volumetric clouds. Having better looking clouds is definitely something you'd want, and that's why the lowest you can go is medium. To be honest, the difference between these is somewhat noticeable when it comes to medium versus high, but as soon as you go up to very high, there's a little bit more cloud. Ultra, there's practically no difference. So the highest I would go is probably very high, if not sticking around high. Medium, there's just two little clouds and it'll feel a little bit empty, but they still are there. High is a good choice here. Then water. The only difference between low, medium, and high is that when you go too high and get underwater, you'll notice light rays and god rays coming from the sun and light sources that makes the water feel a lot more immersive. You won't get this on medium or low, and the difference between them is very marginal, if any at all. It mainly comes down to the distance at which the water smooths out, as you can see in the picture here between low and medium. So if you can, I'd recommend keeping this high as you'll very situationally be around water or even in water. If you notice a huge drop in performance, however, when you do touch water, this is something I'd highly recommend you lower. Then screen space reflections. Turning this off will make everything look quite weird, but it does come with a small performance impact of around 2%. If you can afford to have this on, I'd highly recommend it as the gameplay change is just massive. Then scrolling down to textures with environment textures on very high and character textures on high. The game used around six gigabytes of VRAM, but already changing quite a few of these settings, you can see I'm setting it around 4.8-ish. If you have anything above 6 gigs of VRAM in your system, I'd recommend setting your environment textures to very high and your character textures to high as well. Lowering these will make the game look quite a bit worse, especially when you reach the lower end of this, but it really comes down to how much VRAM you have available on your system. When you change the option here, you'll see the budget change in the bottom. Having both environment textures and character textures on low, we're at 3.2 gigabytes of VRAM used. Raising it to Ultra, for example, we get to 4.6, very high is still at around 4.6, and character textures between low and high, we're using around 200 extra megabytes of VRAM. When it comes to what options you should choose, essentially, it should be based on how much VRAM you have available. If you use more VRAM or close to the max amount of VRAM you have on your graphics card, you're going to notice huge stutters in game, but lowering these options, you won't see too much of a performance increase. So, for this reason, I'd recommend keeping these as high as possible as they have a huge impact on how the game looks. Anything above 6 gigabytes of VRAM, keep it to very high and high. If you have around 4 gigabytes of VRAM, you'll likely need to keep the options on medium for both of these and anything below that, the lowest we can get is 3.2 gigs of VRAM. So it really comes down to the system you have. For me, I'll be keeping this on very high and high. Scrolling down to post-processing. Depth of field, obviously this is your preference. Personally, I find that depth of field at all makes it seem like I need glasses. Between low and high, it changes the amount as well as the quality of depth of field blur in the background, behind characters, objects, etc. Personally, I prefer this effect off completely, but if you like the look that it gives your game, keep this on low. Between off and low, there's very little performance impact, but changing it up to high, you'll notice around a 3% drop in performance performance when you raise it up. So either low or off. Personally, I'll keep this off. Then motion blur, I'd recommend the same here. Personally, I prefer this option to be off, but if you have it on, you'll notice things seem a little bit faster, etc. And it can help mask frame stuttering and things like that if you're struggling with a really stuttery game. If you're one that gets motion sick, I'd highly recommend turning this option off. Personally, I just prefer the look when turning around quickly as I can see exactly what's going on without it being blurred out of focus. So I'll leave it off. Then adaptive quality. 
quantity. If you're getting anything above 60 FPS, I'd recommend keeping it on 60 FPS rather than off. Essentially, when you lower the adaptive quantity FPS, it'll change the resolution dynamically as you play the game to try and keep this FPS target. If you're setting it anything below 60 FPS and you set the target FPS to 60, you'll notice the game quality drop dramatically as it tries to keep up. That's why I'd highly recommend keeping it off if you're setting it anything below the numbers that you're choosing here, simply because the game will just look too bad while you're playing and the changes are much more jarring than you'd expect. So if you're sitting comfortably above 60 FPS, set it to 60, and if for some reason you drop below it, it'll lower the game options just a little bit instead of a huge amount. If you're really struggling, set it to off and manually change your settings below this. Up sample type, this is pretty much your preference. TAA is as close to disabled as we can get, and this really has to do with anti-aliasing. If we leave it at TAA, the game shouldn't be changing the resolution pretty much at all if we leave the up sample quality at native. Sharpen strength, 60, is is good enough. To play at anything other than native and get a huge performance increase, use either DLSS, XESS, or FSR2. If you have an NVIDIA graphics card, choose DLSS. It's that simple. I think you'll need something around the RTX 2000 or an RTX card just in general to use DLSS. If you don't have an RTX 2000 or above graphics card, choose AMD FSR2. The only real difference between DLSS and FSR is how the game looks when it comes to artifacts motion blur, etc. Some may see that FSR2 is a little bit sharper than DLSS in some cases, and if you prefer the look of FSR, choose that. If you're using AMD, choose AMD FSR. And finally, if you're using an Intel Arc graphics card, simply choose Intel XESS. It all ultimately comes down to your preference. Personally, I usually use AMD FSR2, even though I have an NVIDIA graphics card. It just looks a little bit better to me. If you need to boost your FPS, change the upsample quality here to one of these performance options, such as maybe quality for a small dip in how the game looks, but a huge boost in performance. This is the option that I'd recommend for pretty much everyone. The more to the performance side you push this, the more weird graphic artifacts you'll notice and glitches, things like that. So if you're not clawing for FPS, don't lower this option too much. Quality is pretty much good enough and where I would personally leave it. Finally, sharpen strength. If you find that the game looks a little bit blurry with any of the upsampling types here, you can raise this to whatever you're comfortable with. For me, this is pretty good as FSR2 quality and 60%. Finally, we'll hit apply and you'll notice that you need to restart the game in order for changes to take place. Make sure you do agree to this, otherwise all of your settings will roll back and that would be terrible. There we go, back in game, not completing the update that I was given just to make sure everything's fair. I'll go into benchmark with all of our custom options and try it out. Oh, and I'll also enable the overlay. And there we go. Jumping from around 69-ish average FPS to apparently 70 four minimums have been greatly improved from I think it was one to seven frame studies are still happening somewhat often but of course that should hopefully be fixed with future updates to the game as for general feel and look the look still looks amazing practically no difference between the ultra setting and this but there definitely was a noticeable improvement in smoothness ultimately this is an optimization guide to keep the game looking as good as possible and you will still need some good hardware in order to capitalize on how it looks. If you need further performance, I'll head back to options and show you what to lower. You'll leave pretty much everything on the screen tab as is, but on the graphics tab, you'll scroll all the way down to the bottom and change the FSR quality here, or DLSS, XESS, etc. from quality further to the performance side for a huge improvement in how the game feels. When it comes to textures, lowering these options here will increase your performance somewhat, but it definitely changes how the game looks a ton, and I'd recommend keeping these as high as possible. As for volumetric clouds, shadows, and maybe water, these three options you can lower most of the time for a small impact on how the game looks, but greatly improve how it feels and your FPS number, of course. Screen space reflections, I'd pretty much always recommend leaving on. As for world, lowering world details, you'll notice the game becomes less and less full of objects and things like that, but your FPS should improve quite greatly. But you'll also notice that as you're traveling around, things pop in closer to you instead of further away when you have this option set to the lower end rather than the higher end. Finally, density. This will mostly affect CPU performance over anything else, but lowering this option can increase your FPS in general. With all of these graphic options out of the way and the other tabs we don't have too much other than maybe blood effects in gameplay, this could possibly affect your performance in 
combat and things like that. But most of the time, this isn't going to make much of a difference, if any at all. If you notice your FPS drops for some reason when the screen shakes, you can disable it here as well. And if you're struggling with motion sickness, this could help as well, on top of turning off motion blur. Finally, on the sand tab, there isn't too much here that we might need to change other than possibly dynamic range. The higher your dynamic range, the more difference there is between quiet and loud sounds. This isn't really going to impact your performance pretty much at all. But if you find yourself jarred by the difference between loud and soft noises, you can push this to night or medium for a better experience. Other than that option, everything else is your preference and there's pretty much nothing else we may need to change. Finally, to give you an idea of how the game performs at the lowest settings, I'll head into options, make sure everything on the screen tab is as before, which it is. I'll raise the refresh rate, vSync off, and on the graphics tab, we'll make sure that everything is set down to low here. Scrolling all the way down to the bottom, we'll make sure adaptive quality is set to off, and we'll keep upsample quality at quality. Just a quick note about adaptive quality, if you have this enabled, it's not going to use the upsampler you have specified down here, or at least not really, until you drop below your FPS target. So I'll quickly run this again just after this with the same optimized settings, but with adaptive quality off. So for now, upsample quality set to quality, and of course, everything down to the lowest possible setting. Let's quickly run the benchmark and see what we get. It's obviously a lot more jumpy, but at least it's much higher. But as for lighting glitches, weird artifacts, etc., shadows are definitely flashing around quite a bit. Characters are popping in and out of low resolution and high resolution. The same goes for trees, which are 2D until they're five meters away from you, etc., etc. The game really doesn't look good at all with everything pushed down so low, but you can see I've gone up from an average of 60-ish FPS to optimize, which is around 70, 80, all the way up to 90, 100, with everything dropped down to low. Performance is greatly improved. There is still quite a bit of stuttering. I assume this will be fixed as time goes on and the engine is improved and updated, etc. But as for the improvement, I really wouldn't push this far into the low end unless you're running a really old system. This game does look pretty good with the optimized settings or even the ultra settings, and you'll need a really up to date PC in order to play it properly. Something that has changed quite a bit is CPU utilization. It's practically zero throughout this benchmark, which is pretty surprising. And there you have it, 94 FPS average. Let's quickly rerun our optimized settings just to make sure that adaptive quality is turned off and instead we lock FSR to the quality setting instead of it adjusting dynamically as the game goes on. Having your resolution adjust dynamically could cause frame stuttering, etc. So let's just rule that out completely. I'll leave everything as is on the screen tab and for graphics I'll get back to my optimized settings but this time I'll make sure adaptive quality is turned off and upsample type is selected as AMD FSR 2 at quality. All right there we go with all of our optimized settings punched in once more or upsampling set to quality FSR 2 with adaptive quality off I'll apply changes and restart the game to see what difference it makes. There we go so with everything as is once more we'll quickly run through the benchmark quality oh I see that changed AMD FSR 2 and see what difference it makes. Okay, there we go. Much, much better results. As you can see, the graphics is pretty much as good as very high or possibly even ultra. Shadows are a little bit jumpy, but of course, raising the quality of a few things is definitely doable. As we move from 60 average-ish FPS all the way up to the mid to high 80s, even 90s, but we'll wait for this test to end just so everything is fair. And there you have it, 94 FPS. It's a lot more stable. And of course, the low and lowest FPS is pushed up way higher. This is a much more fair result. And this is what the optimized settings really came to with adaptive dynamic resolution disabled. Anyway, so with that comes the end of this optimization guide. Hopefully you found this video useful. Thank you all for watching. My name's been Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.